Hey there, thank you so much for watching my YouTube. Have you subscribed? <gasps> Seriously, you should subscribe because this is really encouraging, encouraging short and helpful stuff to encourage your soul and strengthen your heart. So we're continuing our series on live big. And how do we live big? Especially in the world that we live in with all the stuff going on around us. We got elections coming, Ugh. all that politics. You're like, well, you should be praying, sir. I agree, we <laughs> should be praying, of course. But you think about it, it's, it's a world that we live in that's bizarre. And a lot of things like COVID and you know, racial tensions, lots of stuff that's difficult and hard and, and think about the job, economy, all. And if we're not careful, those things can get super, super big. And I've talked about this, given the illustration, you know, if you put a quarter up to the sun, you can block out the sun. And you and I both know that the quarter is not even close to as big as the sun. The sun is way bigger. And I say that because I, I think that sometimes the problems around us can turn it into a quarter. They're that size when we compare them to God, the immensity of God. And God is bigger. God is bigger than the problems. God is bigger than the elections. God is bigger than COVID. God is bigger than the economy. God is bigger than health concerns you might have. God is bigger than struggles you might be having in relationships, on your job, at your school. God is bigger. And if we're going to live big, then we need to let God be who God is and worship God for who God is and let God be bigger than our problems. And I think a great example of this is Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These are three Hebrew kids, guys, I shouldn't say kids, guys, that we read about in Daniel chapter 3. And in Daniel chapter 3, there was a king, Babylonian king, Nebuchadnezzar, who had made this giant statue, and he told, it was a, an idol of himself, and he told his entire kingdom, on such and such a day, everybody's going to bow down and worship the idol, this idol, me. They're going to worship my statue. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said, we're not doing that. And the king made this decree nationwide, and if you don't bow down to the idol, then we're going to throw you in a fiery furnace. And Shadrach, and Abish Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said, we're not doing that. We're not going to bow down and worship an idol. And I want to encourage you today, myself as well, that we don't bow down and worship the problem, whatever it might be. The problem might be, and, and when you say, what do you mean by, I'm not worshiping, I'm not worshiping COVID, Sarah. No, we don't like explicitly, you know, all hail. But I want to say that sometimes I think we do worship problems when we allow them to be our fixation, our focus. When we gravitate and we come back to those and we circle back to those problems, back to whatever the thing is you're concerned about, the worry. The, and pretty soon that becomes our central fixation, our focal point. And if that's our focal point, then family, we've turned the problem that should be a quarter and we blocked out the immensity of God. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had every reason to let that idol, that statue, become their focal point. Because if they didn't bow down, the furnace was the option, the only other alternative. And Nebuchadnezzar said to him, if you don't bow down, I'm going to heat up this furnace like huge, make it super, super hot. And I love what these three guys said. They said, you know what, king? We know we're not going to worship you. We're not going to worship the statue or the idol. We're not doing that. Because we know that our God can rescue us and save us. But even if he doesn't, we're still not going to worship you. And I love that. I love their conviction and their commitment to worship the one true God. Because when we get under pressure, when we get under fire, no pun intended, it can absolutely, we can really be tempted. It can be a challenge for us not to fixate on whatever the problem is. And, and these three Hebrew guys, they walked this line. They showed us and they give us an example. Look, no matter what happens, we're not going to bow down and worship some small little tiny idol. We're not going to bow down and worship fear. We're not going to bow down and worship COVID. We're not going to bow down and worship the news, what the news says about the elections or our jobs or the economy. We're not going to bow down and worship those things. We're going to exalt God. We're going to choose to continue to worship God because we know that God is bigger than any idol, than any hardship, than any struggle. And when they chose to do that, they still got thrown into the fiery furnace. 
And I want to say just because you choose to worship God doesn't mean you're not going to go through hot seasons and difficult times. But be aware that Jesus is in the midst of that fiery furnace with you. And you read that in Daniel chapter 3. It says that King Nebuchadnezzar looked in the furnace, three Hebrew guys in there, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and he says, hey, we put in three, right? How come there's a fourth one in there? And the fourth one, this is what Nebuchadnezzar says, the fourth one looks like the son of God. And Jesus is always walking with us. No matter what furnace we go through, let's exalt God. Let's let God be bigger. We know God is bigger then let's choose with our focus. Let's choose with our words. Let's choose with our attention. Let's choose with our, our heart that we're going to exalt God no matter what we're going through, no matter what the hardship, no matter what's around us, I don't, whatever. I choose to let God be big because when I do that, then I live big. I live who God has made me to be. So I just want to thank you so much for watching. And of course, I want you to think about this question. What, what's a furnace that you might be in? You might be in a furnace right now. You're like, what do you mean by that? Well, you might be in a health furnace. You might be in a financial furnace. You might be in like a, a crisis in terms of a decision. What's a furnace that you're in right now? And as you put that feedback, I wanna, I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to look at that feedback and give you some encouragement. But I want to pray and encourage you that God is bigger than that furnace and Jesus is in that, that journey with you. So thank you for your feedback. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Thank you for subscribing. I really appreciate it. You could share this with some friends because I bet you might know one or two people <laughs> who are going through a furnace as well. And, and of course, these jokes. Oh, I know. We <laughs> love these jokes. Okay, kind of. But th I love this one because this is actually not far from removed from my house. So this is uh, my wife asked me or my husband asked me, if, she, if he could have some peace and quiet, she could have some peace and quiet while, while cooking dinner. And so my husband took out <laughs> the batteries from the smoke alarm. <laughs> I think that's so funny because here's the deal. When I cook, my family always measures how good the meal is by the number of smoke alarms. <laughs> if it's a one smoke alarm meal, then we know it's okay. If two or three smoke alarms, <laughs> it's gonna be fantastic. You're like, are you serious? I'm totally serious. Ask anybody in my family and they will tell you, oh yeah, no smoke alarms, it's a bad meal. <laughs> I know, that's stupid. Well, thank you so much for watching and we'll catch you next week as we finish up Living Big in this wonderful series. God bless you.